Howdy. Um, so what we're going to do here in this next session um, is just give a quick update just on delivery. Um, wanted to highlight on some of the things that have been said over the past session and on Tuesdays as well. Speaking right now, this is Aaron Schmidt. I'm our director of delivery, probably come in contact with most everyone that's on the call now, either through past projects or active projects or even on some of our pursuits here. Um, and then Pat Reed, I think everyone knows him. He's our chief operating officer. He'll be coming in at the tail end here. Just quickly, what are we working on? Um, at least internally, we seem like we're all moving very quickly, but um, externally, not sure that we all know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. So I wanna share a little bit of an update there. Um, Dennis mentioned implementability on Tuesday. So I wanna circle back there, give a little bit of update as far as how does this tie into the delivery and the implementation process that we're providing. And then also, I uh, really want to provide some augmented highlights on some of our active projects. I know we heard from SCE and EQL already, um, but just want to really highlight on those two. And then also LG&E, uh, those are some of our active projects from this past year. So to start off, uh, just a little bit of insight into kind of what's going on in the past year. Um, the SBS project landscape, at any given time, the SBS team is working on probably about 40 plus projects and the scope ranges with a wide array in of scale and spread across North America and international markets. Uh, there's quite a few of our folks that are working in many different time zones within one day. It's quite impressive. Um, the size of, of clients that we're serving range from the tier ones, government, co-ops, and munis. Um, as kind of we've been talking about, um, our product offerings are varying from distribution, substation, transmission. We're doing full blown implementations with GIS and asset management. Um, some clients are only doing single integrations. Um, the big push in the industry lately has been a lot of data migrations, so we're absolutely supporting that. And then, of course, as we have new upgrades that are coming out for our products, we're working through um, projects that are specific to upgrades. And we also have some clients that are just on general support. So projects vary in all different arrays. Some of the various clients, as you guys all know on this call, probably very familiar with each other. Um, again, range in all different size and all the different parts of the world. Uh, point being here, though, is the quality of the solutions that we're implementing and providing, those remain the same, but all those, although the scope and the size of each of the clients, that may differ. So what we're really trying to say is we know that there's a lot of change that occurs when you're trying to implement a new project but you're not alone in this. There's someone else that's out there that's going through the exact same project or has gone through it. So that's why we have this peer utility group. There's absolutely gonna be someone out there that you can reach out to, ask questions, get confirmation that the processes and the decisions that we're making at the project level actually do make sense. So one of the other things that we're extremely proud of is just the breadth of all of the products that we have across all of our different clients. The one thing that's very important here is that although our client size and the scope of the projects all range, the products that are being implemented are the exact same. So it doesn't matter if it's at an IOU or down to a co-op or muni, a, the AUD product is the same. Same thing with the integrations. What changes is the configuration to match the standards that you need to get your business processes done on a day-to-day -day basis. One thing that we're very proud of again is, if you probably heard us say this many, many times, is we, Frown upon custom code. Custom code is a bad word around here. We try to stick to the COTS mandate as close as possible, and I think this resonates with almost all of our clients as well. So to date, SBS has still not found a need to write a single line of custom code for any of our integrations or AUD configuration. As I mentioned, we're very proud of that piece. Another aspect of our implementations is we pride ourselves on having the ability to have flexible integrated design solutions. So what this means is through the implementation strategies, we have the ability to tailor to the business and IT needs. We're not looking to force our solution, or not, sorry, we're not trying to force your business process into our solution. It should be the other way around. We are adaptable to match. So what this means is we could take the big bang approach, let's integrate and do the full implementation all in one. We could do a phased approach. We could do gradual implementations based on domain or business unit, I meaning we could do gas first and electric, we could do uh, distribution before substation, et cetera. And then we also have the ability to change interfaces. Uh, the UDH GIS product and the UDH EAM product are extremely flexible. Um, as I mentioned before, um, the adaptability is really there. We're trying to fit the business process versus the other way around. 
And then because of the flexibility, SBS has never required an external application to make changes to support the new solution. Rather, when we go through our architecture exercises, we'll always suggest using intermediate databases or data translations as an alternative. So this try to alleviate some of that third party worry or concern that we're gonna drive that complexity. So implementability, um, this is one thing that we've been working on very actively over the past year. I know Dennis gave a brief introduction on this on Tuesday, uh, but the real, the real uh, power to this is we understand as we're going through and bringing in new processes, new tools, that's not everyone's favorite. Change is hard, we get that. So what we've been trying to do is simplifying this not only from the technological aspect, but also from the delivery standpoint. Uh, change management is one of those hot topics across all industries, especially in ours. Um, so what we wanna do is really try to drive down that complexity. Um, one of the areas that we've identified is we really need to close the gap between client business processes and technology. So through some of the delivery tools that we have, we're providing the availability to do that from project inception to project closure. Also, we talk about the semi-agile approach a lot of times. Uh, it, that derives on the iterative and prototyping aspect. We're trying to get hands-on much earlier in the process of the project. Um, this also ties into simplifying the feedback loop. Because we're providing more tangible, uh, iterative and prototyping releases, we can get feedback much earlier on. We all know that time is money, time is gold. Um, everyone is working on other activities and everyone's extremely busy. So we want them to try and minimize the amount of time that resources are working on the project and that they can focus on their business as usual. So this means us providing the agendas in order for us to gather the information that is required to keep us moving. Knowledge transfer, this ties into change management. This is one of those peak top topics. Um, we are always from project inception to project completion, trying to make sure that the end users have as much insight on how to use the configuration as possible and then this ties to the handoff at the end of the project. We want each of you guys to be able to have the ability to maintain the solution so that when SPS is not there, you have that confidence. So we're very excited about implementability. All of our current projects that are in flight are taking advantage of this, um, and we will see much more improvement here as we continue to move forward. Next, I just wanted to do a little bit more highlights on some of the active projects. Um, I know SCE uh, went on Tuesday, um, but just a couple of things that we wanted to highlight here that are very key for us. Um, as Jeremy and um, Tony mentioned, um, the project background for them was they were previously on a highly customized Autodesk solution, lots of integrations, but they were hampered by uh, not being able to upgrade at least for the past couple of years. Um, due to this, they did have a little bit of a latency in their workflow. Uh, a lot of data redundancy, and then many of their third-party applications just didn't have the direct integrations they were looking for. So a key commonality here across almost all of our projects is number one business objective here. This is sticking to the COP solution. This is one of the things that we always talk about at the beginning of a project. It ties back to no custom code. We really want to make sure that we're supporting the objective of future upgradability and ease of maintainability. At SCE, the other big driver for them was the standardized design tool across all their business units. This is internal and external contractors, their subdivisions, system improvements, and sub-transmission. Status, as Jeremy mentioned, uh, the GDT project is live, and they're currently in a post-delivery support phase. That project did go on for a little bit of time, but we are definitely not done. There's more to see to go on. Uh, so currently, uh, in pursuit of SCE to utilize the UDHGIS module. This would support the export of designs from AUD's Playback Manager for promotion of the as built design into GIS. So that's one component. And then also in parallel, uh, on the substation side, we're actively working to deploy the physical for AutoCAD and the protection and control project also utilizing their existing integration. So some of the key highlights here, and this was a big significant one for them, was the time savings. Uh, in the UDH EAM module, which is the integration between AUD and their asset management, um, when they were publishing materials, it was taking a very long time for that activity to actually occur. Um, with the new solution in place, they went from hours to seconds. So in this screenshot, you can see the activity of actually going through and publishing a design uh, through their screen. 
Uh, one of the other business objectives, as mentioned, was the standardized accessibility. This objective was absolutely achieved. Um, all distribution design groups now have the ability to be on the same tool. This can be shared and it's standardized across the organization. Again, this is internal groups and external contractors. So really great work at SDE there. The other one we wanna highlight on is EQL. Um, thanks to Ray, he gave us a great introduction to this on Tuesday. Uh, this was a massive project. This was one of the largest utility network migrations coming from two different sources. Um, so that was kind of their, their background. Uh, they previously were two companies, Energex and Ergon. Uh, they needed to meet and come up with a unified business entity uh, through the implementation of ArcGIS Utility Network and SAP HANA in a cloud infrastructure. Objectives here, very similar to the others. Uh, they wanted to make sure that we were sticking to the COPS mandate. The solution needs to be able to support future upgradability and ease of maintainability. One of the other objectives was they wanted to allow a designer to stay in one tool for all activities and eliminate the requirement to know SAP or other applications, know the ins and outs of spreadsheets in order to get their day-to-day -day job done. As Ray mentioned, we are very, very close to going live. Uh, I think we're just about two weeks from that. Um, the current solution is integrated to Azure Utility Networks and their existing Ellipse and SAP systems. The next piece to this is the stage two. This is where we are going to transition EQL to the SAP HANA in the cloud. So this goes back to the flexible integration solutions. Um, the other aspect, um, as Ray mentioned, is EQL is also standardizing on the SBS physical for AutoCAD and protection and control as well. Uh, that is set to go live in the next month. And then additionally, they are looking to also reuse their existing UDH modules to integrate the substation group, that would be a full integration. Some key highlights on that project, um, as Ray kind of showed, they had some really, really strong advanced standard validation. So the AUD rules replace spreadsheets and calls the third party applications to validate standards. And we made these match to the Australian standards that they need in order to um, rubber stamp their designs. As you can see in these, the images here, uh, 3D was a very key objective here. Um, so at EQL, 3D optimization was excellent. They took advantage of the power of the utility network and all the 3D models in order to visualize the complex underground and designs with shared and integrated transactions. So this went across from AUD and GIS. Flexible strategy, as I mentioned, this allowed the implementation of Ellipse to occur first so that the teams could go into production during the interim state until we're able to transition over to SAP, which will be completed next year. The other big one here is the remote support. Um, remote designers productivity has improved by removing the live connect requirement. Um, as Ray mentioned, they have a lot of territory. Um, some of that is the inner land, so that they need to be able to have the ability to uh, do this remote. Last project I wanna give a quick shout out or a highlight on is the LG and EKU project. Um, LG&E and KU, they have been going through a migration from their existing small world to their Ezra utility network. Um, as part of this, they really want to just improve the information that they had available and also be able to support map mobile applications. Um, in order to do this, they wanted to go through a staged approach. So they wanted to be able to still have small world in production while they also had Esri in production. In order to do this, they needed to be able to have minimized disruption to the business. Um, additionally, we needed to do a complete technology upgrade, so we upgraded all of the Autodesk products in, on top of the AUD and UDH GIS integration to support utility networks. Currently, the GAS integration with AUD is in production. Uh, we are underway with the utility network electric integration. Uh, we are in early design phase for that currently. Um, next on the table would be to look into utilizing the UDH GIS modules to support the export. Uh, and again, similar to, the, to SCE, this would enable them to be able to play designs from AUD into GIS for a full round trip. Key highlights here, um, as I've mentioned, they were able to adopt that flexible strategy. So here they went with gas first and then electric is to follow. So the current uh, workflow for them is that they are able to import in data from ArcGIS utility network into AUD. That's what you can see here in both these designs stacked on top of each other. One of the major highlights here is there was really zero end user impact. 
uh, with the upgrade of UDH GIS, um, some of the users weren't even able to know that there was GIS data that had changed. The interface was the exact same. Again, we talked about the UDH GIS flexibility here. Uh, we were able to support both the small world electric and utility network uh, for gas simultaneously. So I, we could call this one all objectives achieved. So finally, just a quick summary for you. Um, as I mentioned, we are very much actively working, uh, keeping everyone very busy here. Um, over the past uh, year, there's been 15 organizations that have switched or are in the process of switching to AUD. There's 21 organizations that have switched or are in the process of switching to substation. We've got one physical for AutoCAD project that is completed with UAT. There's one pilot that is completed. And then we've also got another physical for AutoCAD pilot that is just getting started. So this past year, there was a major push with the physical for AutoCAD and all of the various products that we've been drastically improving. So it was a real big test of the validity of the SBS processes and flexibility of the architecture. And the, the big advantages we've all experienced would be COVID. We had to do all of this remote. And I think we've been proving through track record here that we're able to do this successfully. Hydro One started last year and that's been remote to date. And they're still coming off through their testing cycles and things are looking great. Some of the other ones we've got here are just about to get started. Uh, so we're very excited for what the next year has in store for us. Just to finish off, um, I think a lot of you guys are all familiar with some of our delivery team, just either through in passing or who you talk to on the phone, but there's a lot of different faces that are in the background that keep the wheels moving. So I want to just give a shout out here to some of these folks. Um, a lot of these are in our back office or on our sales team or just making sure that we're keeping software or the lights on for everyone. Um, just quickly, I'll run through some names here. Up on the top left, that's Ben Lord. He runs our finance. Going across, that's Jenny. We've got Steve Milligan as part of our product team. Sean Wellman, who leads the support team. He'll be giving a presentation, I believe, next week. Robert Haskett keeps all the lights on for us from an IT and technology standpoint, and literally the lights on. Stefan, down in the bottom left there, and Jared Yates, part of the sales team. Peter Quick, part of the product team. Nancy Trinka, I'm sure all of you that have active software have been in contact with her. She will keep you honest. Trevor Scolian, part of the substation team. Ryan Kaufman, whose voice I'm sure you've heard. And then Nick and Taylor, all part of the Kaufman family, keeping the lights on for us in the marketing and sales side as well. Our team is still growing as well. Uh, with all the new projects coming in play, we do have two new project managers. Some of you probably met or will meet here shortly. We've got Dave Schlesinger and Randy Wickey. And then on the support side and moving into the technical side is Carly Cliff. She supports Sean Wellman. And then Dylan Taylor, he's been on our team for a little while. He's transitioned from being an intern into a full-time consultant. Um, he's straddling between distribution and substation projects. And then Ethan, he's helping out with all the marketing and getting all these slides looking very nice. So thank you to all. Really appreciate all the hard work that's going into making these deliveries much more successful.